Hi, my name's Phil, I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'd like to discuss polling and the strategy that various Tory leadership candidates may have to employ in the latter stages of this contest. Now, as this video is published, another round of voting will have been announced and at least one more candidate knocked out. But I want to talk about the realistic candidates for the leadership, not the also rounds who are just trying to wrangle a senior job in the winner's government. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So uh, I obviously do not know how the second round voting will have gone, but it will be announced as the video is published, so you will. Um, but what I do know is this, the favourites are Rishi Sunak, Penny Mordon, and Liz Truss, with Kemi Badnock being a very interesting, if somewhat terrifying, outside chance. So I'm going to talk about how I view this contest strategically. I love a bit of strategy. And I'm going to do it from the point of view of Rishi Sunak for two reasons. Uh, first, I don't think any of the other leadership candidates hold any terrors for Labour. Uh, I think they'd prefer to deal with Sunak, but I don't think Whoever wins, I don't think Labour are going to think, oh, no, we're in trouble now. Uh, there's just ones they'd prefer. Problem is, though, if I think that, I'm guessing so too do a lot of Conservatives who will therefore never back Sunak. But second, because Sunak's campaign actually looks like it can't win. Yes, he's the front runner right now, but it looks like he can't win. This is where strategy can work some magic, because it seems clear that Rishi Sunak is the favoured candidate for MPs. He is likely to have the most votes all the way through these rounds. He, I'm going to look silly if uh, the results have come out today and he's not. But he does look certain to find himself on the final ballot going to members. But he has got a big problem, however, in that some polling from yesterday indicates he would lose a head-to-head -head with any of the realistic challenges to him. So it looks like Sunak is knackered. Yes, he'll get himself on the final ballot, then he'll lose. Don't matter who else is on it, he'll just lose. But there's a way to go yet. And one advantage that Sunak has is that he has such strong support in Parliament that he can actually focus his campaign on party members. He'll have plenty of money to throw at it. And while the other candidates are having to do deals with MPs, he can focus on the next stage. And he may also have so much support in Parliament that he can even afford to use some of that st support strategically. Right now, the obvious rival is Penny Mordaunt. Now, if you look at her polling, she would absolutely smash anyone else in a vote by the members. So Penny Mordaunt is nailed on to become the next Prime Minister. Except this is not quite the case. First of all, if Liz Truss can start appealing to more of the MPs who backed candidates that are dropping out, Sunak can almost certainly coordinate some of his support to vote for Truss to get her on the final ballot and kick Mordaunt out. There's form for this. Boris Johnson did exactly this to get Jeremy Hunt on the final ballot in 2019 and make sure Michael Gove was frozen out. It was believed that Michael Gove had the best chance of beating Johnson in a member's vote, and he might have done as well, because Jeremy Hunt didn't do badly at all in that final vote. So Michael Gove could certainly have beaten Johnson. But Johnson had enough support in Parliament to basically fiddle the voting. Sunak looks like he may be in the same position. And although this polling shows that Truss would also beat Sunak, it's by a smaller margin. And as more campaigning goes on, Sunak may increase his support with members and Truss may lose it. I mean, if Badnock gains a load of support in the second round of voting, and you'll know that, but I can't at time of recording, then maybe Sunak could even engineer getting her on the final ballot. The gap is even smaller if he runs up against her but I'm not sure that's feasible. But who knows? There are televised debates this weekend that could actually embellish or damage a candidate's campaign. Tory party members will certainly be watching, but so too will a lot of the public. And if any candidates come across really well, they could see their public polling benefiting. Now, if Sunak can demonstrate that he is most likely to win a general election because he's got a better connection with voters, then he could persuade some party members to switch their support to him despite any reservations they may have about his competence or his policies. And Sunak's got some ammunition here, because Ipsos polling shows Sunak as being the best regarded by ordinary voters. Penny Mordon is largely unknown. In fact, another poll suggests that only 11% of people even know who she is. I'll be honest, I was surprised it was that many. 
and only 6% correctly identified her ministerial position under Boris Johnson. So Mordaunt is going to be introducing herself to the public this weekend via those televised debates. If she messes it up and Sunak does well, then this initial polling from yesterday changes dramatically. Then there's the briefing war. A lot of people do not know who Mordaunt is. This is a weakness, but also a benefit in that she's not mired in sleaze. But that is not to say that there aren't skeletons in her closet. It's just that the general public don't know about them. She is as mired in corruption as any of the other candidates with cabinet experience and potentially the most obvious target for media articles on her links with sleaze if those media outlets are not really on her side. I mean, she can sling mud back, of course, but when it comes to Rishi Sunak, at least, much of the public already know about it. What's she going to say that they don't already know? He may well be throwing stones from a glass house, but if his windows are already cracked, he may feel that he's got way less to lose from dirty tricks than any of his rivals. You know, when Jeremy Hunt fell out of the contest yesterday, he urged those remaining to fight a clean campaign for the sake of the reputation of the party once the dust settles. This was very good advice. I strongly suspect nobody who is seriously in the running will pay a blind bit of attention to it. It's already been a dirty campaign. And if I were in Sunak's team, the situation as it is now is crystal clear. He will lose in the final round with the party members. Doesn't matter who ends up with him, he's going to lose. Now, he is in Parliament purely to become Prime Minister. For what reason? I cannot say. Maybe he just wants to go down in history as the first non-white Prime Minister of the country. That would be the most benign reason I could think of. I suspect greedier motives, but I don't know. What I do know is that if he loses, he may not bide his time to try again. Because like whomever wins is likely to lose the next general election. It's not certain, of course, but it is likely. They'll then have to resign. Sunak may be able to win the next leadership contest. He may be able because he'll, he'll presumably retire to the back benches if he wants to play the longer game to distance himself from whoever wins so that he can then say, look, you, if you'd have listened to me before, I had the best connection with the public. You now need to get serious and back me, you know, and he could win that leadership contest. But then he has to become prime minister the hard way by organising his party in opposition for several years being leader of the opposition, get, get, get the party fit for a future general election. And if we do end up with proportional representation, he's probably knackered out anyway. This may be his one shot. He's not going to bob along only to lose at the final hurdle. And it's really this simple. He can only go so far in changing his image in the eyes of party members. He was the chancellor who ushered in the highest tax burden for generations. Tory party members don't like that much. And the highest inflation since 1981. No party members would like that. He can try and blame Boris Johnson for constraining him. You know, and he has to do that, quite frankly. But it's only going to work on so many people. You know, he's the only serious candidate to insist, for example, on not cutting those highest taxes for generations until inflation's under control. Which is not going to be for years. Although I doubt he's going to be saying that last part. So he has to tarnish the view of his rivals in the eyes of party members. He can only big himself up so much. There's nothing else for it. If he doesn't, he loses. Simple as that. So he will try and get damaging information about them leaked. He will have to work very hard to come across well in these TV debates. This is going to be arguably make or break for him and hope that Truss and Moore don't do poorly. I suspect Truss can be counted on to do poorly. A lot of people thought Mordaunt's opening campaign speech was the best of the lot. Most polished, she wasn't reading from a script. But the way I view it, she's been practising for months. In fact, it, she's had some briefing against her. Officials in her department have suggested that she hasn't been doing any work for like six months. You know, she, they've been without a minister for six months, they're saying. Which sounds to me like she spent that six months getting ready for this campaign. In December, we knew Boris Johnson was going. It was only a matter of when. So she may not do well when put on the spot where she can't have rehearsed the answers for six months solid. You know, much less easily controlled environment of a public debate could catch her out. So basically, if Sunak wants to win, he needs to do three things. First, he has to build up his own standing amongst Tory party members. He can help do this by building up his approval ratings amongst the general public so that he can demonstrate he has the best chance of winning the election. Second, tarnish the public and party view of Penny Mordaunt, as well as Liz Truss if possible. Right now, she is clearly the candidate he cannot beat, 
but also the polling would suggest even Truss is a bridge too far. Third, try to avoid facing Mordaunt in the final stage completely by shoring up the support of an easier to beat rival, either Badnot or Truss, depending on how it plays out. And the thing is that two of those strategic objectives, and they must all be met if he is to win, two of them are going to absolutely require skullduggery. Fun times. But those are my thoughts on... Uh, let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.